Hey guys, Ben Watts here once again for ETUTS Plus. Today I'm going to show you how to create a transforming logo template. Um, I contacted Adam from ETUTS Plus with this pitch and he said that is a cool effect but how about we uh, create a tutorial showing people how to create one of these things. So I thought that's an awesome idea, let's make a, a template that can be reused and repurposed and um, you'll drop in whatever logo you want and the, the shadows and the effects will apply and update automatically making it dynamic. So um, let's go ahead and have a look at what we're going to be creating. Alright, so nothing uh, too difficult or hard. Um, we've got some cool stuff that we cover like the uh, camera shake controller, of course the transform effect, changing from one logo to the other, uh, blending between the, the wall and floor nicely, the circular elements in the background with the shape layers, some environment particles. There's a bit to get through guys, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's start with the transform effect. Just create a new comp. 1287 25 seconds long and just call this one content alright and then we're going to drag in the A Tuts logo and just scale it up so it fills the frame like that that's fine do another new comp and we'll call this one uh, call it sec1 I'll make it the same dimensions all right, and then just drag in the the content composition alright so now what we're going to do is grab our mask tool and just start to cut this up into pieces Alright, so just drag these pieces in close to the edge, they don't have to be perfect. And we're just duplicating and dragging below. Grab the uh, top mask points, drag them down, and we're just looking for changes in the shape. And um, that's pretty basic stuff, guys, but it does um, result in a pretty cool final effect. Uh, bring them in and just shift this in. Alright, cool. So in this effect you've basically you've got sections. Um, that's what I call them anyway and um, in every section you have the amount of pieces that you want. So what we've done here is just created um, probably the start, of, well it's just the start of the first section so we've got you know, three pieces and this is where you could break this up and duplicate this as many times as you wanted um, depending on how compli uh, complex you wanted the effect to be. But um, we'll just start with this for now. Okay, so um, what we'll do now is make another new comp and we'll call this one main section. Alright, and in here we're going to drag um, sec1. Okay, so um, and this is what you'll do here is duplicate sec1 and call it sec2, you drag that above, go inside, and then um, you will actually grab these mask points and grab the far left and drag them over so you can work your way through and just gradually uh, build up the whole logo full of pieces. Like I said, you can spend a lot of time cutting this right up. But for the tutorial, we'll just do a few so we can show you what's happening. So if we go in the main section now, you can see we've got two pieces. One here and two here. And you could just keep on going um, and duplicating. So we'll do another one. Oops, you want to actually duplicate the comp, not the layer. We'll call it Sec3. Drag that in. And um, you can see sort of what I'm getting at here. It's a lot of repetition. But I think it's worth it in the end. And um, go on through. And yeah, there we go. Have a look. One, two, three. Alright, so that's good. That's a good start. And that just shows you that process. So what you would do now um, is go into into the sections and just start doing or putting some keys on these and animating them. So we go back into sec1. Now this is what we do. So we go in and what we want to do is grab the anchor point, hit A on the keyboard and we want to drag that, whoops you got to hit Y first, grab the pan behind tool, just start to put these 
around where you'd like to effectively have them hinge from. So hit A, so we treat the anchor point like a hinge and it's going to sort of open up and pop out like a flap. So just go through, just sort of put them in different spots. Uh, I like to do this before I make the layers 3D and just for me it's easier to uh, move them around. Alright, so now if we turn on the 3D switch and we have a look at this and we animate, um, let's see, it's X rotation, we got that happening or Y, so you're probably only going to either animate the X or the Y. So let's set some keys, we'll go uh, at zero here we'll, on the Y, we'll go shift page down to jump out 10 frames and we'll go actually what you want to do is go back to the first one and set it to 90 shift page down set it to 0 go back to the start and come down to the next one and just play around with the X and the Y you know see which one you like the look of the most we just want some difference between them so I'll set a key here at 90 go out 10 frames I think it's pretty easy to get the gist of what I'm trying to do here. Um, we'll go with Y on this one. So we'll go 90, set a key, out 10, and 0. Zoom out here, have a look. Alright, so we've got that going on. Okay, now you can turn on the motion blur uh, for later use. We can have a look now. It looks a lot better with it on. Okay. So that's done. So this is like the, I suppose, the first layer of animation if you want to look at it like that. And just go in and, um, you know, do the exact same thing here. Um, before you turn on the 3D switch, shift the anchor points around, swap them up a bit, turn the 3D switch on and um, animate it. 90 degrees in either the X or the Y and you're, you're set. Alright, so if we go back to the main section we can see what we've got now. Now if we just throw a camera in here quickly, just a 50mm will do. Drop that in. Um, it's just saying that the layers aren't 3D so nothing's going to happen. Turn on the 3D switch. Hit C on the keyboard to cycle through the camera tools. We turn around we can see our animation's flat, but if we turn on the collapse transformation switch for the uh, sec, sec one uh, comp, now we've got a little bit more, well, something that looks a bit more interesting, which is good. Turn the motion blur, and there we go. So we've, you know, made a good start. Turn that off, and you really just go through. Um, and do the same thing. Like there's a lot of repetition. So I'm not gonna you know go into doing each section like we've just done because that's just uh, a waste of time. But what I'll do now is just demonstrate the secondary animation that I sort of came up with. So what I wanted was something that um, scaled up, folded out and sort of rotated. It's sort of something that looks a bit more dynamic. So if we go to sec one, we'll focus on that for now turn off these others. What I did was I set a scale key here and uh, just made that zero and I think I went out like three or four frames just set that back to a hundred so it just does that pops in and folds out. Alright so nothing nothing special but um, the next thing I did on the last scale key, I went to uh, rotate X. I think I did uh, 90 and went out 10 frames. I did zero. So scales, unfolds, and rotates like that. Okay, and then um, <coughs> excuse me. If I go to the last um, X rotation key, I also sort of in that uh, was Z. 
I set it a Z keyframe and I think um, might have been like 50 and then you know, four or five frames out to set it to zero so it you know, scales rotates and then snaps into place oh well, it's not real snappy it's pretty smooth actually but comes up you can get the idea but when you actually do that to a couple of them so if we we might be able to steal these keys off here. Control C to copy. Go back here. Actually, yeah, probably not going to be able to. No, I can't do them all at once, but well, let's just do another one. So we'll just scale it up. Okay, and then we will. Set a key on the X, 90, come out, and then um, we'll do the same with the position, but what we'll do, we'll make it, the, the first key, instead of 50, we'll make it negative 50, so they sort of go in alternate, uh, they alternating directions, see that? Now it's not easy to see right now, but drop another camera in quickly. 50 mil. See that? That shift. So, do it. yeah, it just looks a bit cooler, a bit more dynamic. And um, we need to turn on collapse transformations. Uh, but uh, oh, of course. <laughs> I didn't do any animation, duh. Alright. <laughs> Sorry about that. Just close this. Uh, bit of a dumb moment there. But that's all good. So yeah. If we had have had um, a primary animation, uh, it would have looked a lot different. But yeah, you can get the gist. Comes in, snaps back. Alright, so that that's good. Now there's probably just one more thing uh, that I want to do with the um with the animation and that's uh if you go so I've got all this actually go back to the section go to the last key so it's you know popping into place but after that we'll go back into sec so we've got our time indicator here we can also grab the position here and we'll go say 30 whoops I hit the wrong key then 30 and go one, two, three, and then go zero. So I'll show you what this does. So we got big chunk moves in, then sh sh see that top piece. Cool sound effects there, hey. <laughs> so it comes in after, and you can just go through and just tune up any one of these pieces to just add another level to it. And that's what I did in the final version. I think that makes it look a lot nicer too. Alright, so I think I've covered everything with um, how to sort of set that up. I hope I haven't missed anything. I don't think I have. But um, like I said, there's a lot of repetition and a lot of um, sort of going over similar things. And I don't think that I need to repeat that. Because we've still got a fair bit to cover. But um, yeah, so that's, that's how to sort of do the transform. Not rocket science, but... Um, can look pretty cool and don't forget uh, turn on your motion blur which gives it a much cooler look alright so um, I think now we'll move across to the the version that I've got created with um, all the pieces and sections done and then we'll have a look at building our, um, our environment and um, setting up all the other elements alright so we're gonna bring in my final logo transforms now and work with those and create the uh, the end product. So let's create another new comp. We'll call it main. Drag logo transformation one in. And what we'll do is we'll right click and go time, time reverse layer, and just drag it across. So we want it to start completed and break away. Okay, um, so we've got that. And um, now what we're going to do is create our 3D environment. So we'll go new, control Y for a new solid, just make it. Yeah, like a medium blue, choose OK, 
and drag it below the logo transformation. So turn on the 3D switch for both of these and collapse transformations for the logo. Alright, and um, we'll call this one this solid uh, wall. And we'll control D to duplicate it and we'll call this one floor. Okay, and um, add a light into the scene. Just a uh, point light, it's fine. Make it 80%, which is okay. I'll just position it um, at 640, 360, and 0. That's in the middle, and drag it out in Z. So I can see everything. Alright, now just uh, go to the floor, hit W for the rotate key, and on X. Um, hold down shift and snap it to 90 degrees, drag it down and just switch over custom view 1 you can use your camera tools to rotate around in, in this view which is really handy just move this light around so you can sort of see what's happening a bit more, maybe we can increase the brightness temporarily to 120 and um, grab this floor, just bring it out we're going to adjust these later so it's not a uh, big deal. Make sure you got the wall. Bring it up. They do need to intersect though. Alright, so what we'll do, hit escape to switch uh, views back to our active camera, which we don't have yet, so let's create a new camera. Just 50 mils fine. Okay, and just bring the camera back a bit and also bring the logo um, in Z, just shift the logo forward as well so when we pan around with the camera it's not sitting on the back wall, probably a bit more than that bring it out more and bring the light Whoops. bring the light back as well they're just sort of rough um, settings at the moment so what we're going to do now, pull the camera back and we're just going to do our camera move so we can see how big we need these solids because we're going to do some mods to the solids alright so if we just hit P, shift A so you get the point of interest and position, set keys there and just sort of rotate around a bit maybe zoom out and then come out to here somewhere set more keys and um, we can zoom around like that. Now we're not going to see much at the moment because we don't have a second logo, but just center it up a bit. It's just a rough camera move so we can get an idea of the sizings. That'll do for now. That's fine. Now what we can do is just scale this up and just move it up in the height and stretch it out. Probably don't want our camera move to be so severely rotated here. It just means we're going to have a massive solid which we don't need. Something like that's a bit more subtle. It's probably pretty good and um, just a bit more like that and the same thing for the floor if I can grab it oops and just bring it out a bit clumsy with the old transform handles today never mind alright so that sort of covers everything in our view, which is what we want. I'll we'll add another light. We'll go um, new light, and we'll just make it ambient. We'll give it like 30%. All right. And obviously the logo is too bright right now, but we're not too concerned about that. So if we go back, hit Escape, go back to our custom view. What I want to do is just. Um, get these to intersect fairly well um, if 
we hit P and just drag it down in the Y. Yep, that intersects. That's too far forward. Okay, so that'll do. Hit escape to get back to your active view. Okay, so that's fine. Now what we're going to do is um, go into the wall, Control shift c to pre-compose it, and just call it wall. And same with the floor. Go into the wall, add a new solid, just make it um, uh, black will do, and just scale it down. Just close this composition. We can see we've got a black solid here. If we lock this comp, go back to the wall and just nudge this solid down and unlock and draw a mask around it like so and just feather it in the uh, far right value here go about 80 oh, we could go more probably 120 and go back to our main lock that this is a bit of a fiddly process, just sort of trying to give it a bit of a shadowing look. It's pretty subtle, but it does help kill off that hard edge. And then I'm um, just copy this layer here, go back into our floor, pre-comp, paste that in. Just sort of move that around so we can see it. Lock it here and just nudge it till it sort of lines up zoom in I may have to rotate it, I'm not sure oh it looks okay there we go, looks alright, I mean obviously it could have more tweaking um, like in the final, but it just takes a little bit of the harsh edge off that. Okay, so that's done. Um, now what we'll do is create the shadow for our logo. So we're going to duplicate this logo, transformation 1, turn off the audio, we don't need that. Hit enter and name it shadow. And turn off its collapse transformation switch and rotate it 90 in X and just with the move tool bring it down till it's just above the floor just there will do and add a fill effect one of my personal favorite effects I use this all the time and make it black and T and make it 15% and just if you want you can add a fast blur just to diffuse the shadows a little bit make it 25 pixels alright so now that's looking pretty good we've got our dynamic um, shadows that are obviously going to update when we change our logo got our camera move um, one thing I did uh, forget to do in the floor comp we can add a ramp this is optional you don't have to do this and I won't spend too much time fiddling around with the settings um, have a look in main I can just what it's going to do though is change this line that we've created um, this in the crack between the wall and the floor so if you adjust this ramp you're going to have to go back and um, tweak that which I won't do now because it can be a bit fiddly so I'll just I'll turn that off for now. But you get the gist. You can go in and just add ramps and stylize it like I did in the final version. Um, there's, n there's nothing really new to teach there, so you're not missing out on anything. It's just, um, you know, if you want to add that to it, that's fine. Alright, so um, now what we'll do is, um, let's see, I've got a list here of things we've got to get through. Um, 
we'll, we'll have the camera shake I suppose so we'll go new adjustment layer and we'll name this one shake and then we'll go another one and we'll call this one shake control alright so this is pretty basic um, you can probably do this a number of ways this is just the way that I sort of come up with so we'll add a um, slider control to the top one here which is shake control and just twirl it down so you can see the slider control value here uh, slider and here we're going to add the transform effect pretty cool effect this one probably a bit underused but really really handy now we only want it to shake when it starts to transform so let's crop um, go to here where we can't see the cracks and we'll crop this shake layer and we're going to go into the position of the transform effect I'll click it and the type wiggle 0 comma oh, we have 15 and then highlight the 0 not the comma use the pick whip oops <laughs> drag it up to the slider and left click alright so that's in place now all we got to do is um, go to the shake control and just type in like 10 and if we preview once that layer turns on we're going to get some shake alright turn the motion blur alright so that's all I did in the final just that and just trim it once the second logo is being completed and you can change the wiggle settings to taste but yeah that's what I did for that pretty straightforward and um, you can see we've got black edges what I would normally do because I don't render anything for broadcast in 720 I'd just go um, regular PAL SD res I'd drag that into a new comp and then just slightly crop it because you've got a uh, obviously a higher res comp to begin with you can you can get away with that I don't know another way to do this um, uh, so it repeats the pixels and you get away with um, out having the black edges if someone knows that and they could email me that would be awesome but <laughs> I don't know if there is a way I'm sure there probably is but yeah that's just how I get around it anyway so that's um, the shake control now what we should probably do is um, bring in our second logo so we can actually complete the transformation so I'll bring in um, logo transform 2 set it to 3D and um, just drag it out and we just want to time this up so it looks good you do get away with a bit more with motion blur on um, let's just have a look at that turn the audio off it's loud in my ear there's a fair bit of shake so we'll just dial that down a bit and go like 7 just to a, a preview here yeah it looks alright looks pretty good so um, now what we're going to do is uh, create a shadow for the second logo which is the exact same procedure as the first one just duplicate it um, actually before we do turn on its collapse transformation uh, duplicate it switch it off for the shadow name this uh, shadow 2 and same thing um, rotate 90 in X and just grab the position off the first shadow in Y which was uh, looks like it was 660 hit P and just paste that in okay and also what we need to do is move the logos forward the second versions because they're pushed back so grab the Z value which is negative 409 and negative 409 yeah it's much better alright so let's have a preview of that
Yep. So you probably you can add the uh, same fill and fast blur effect to the shadow too. And remember to dial its opacity down to about 15%. Alright, so I'll just twirl them up. And we could probably start this a little bit later. Have a look. That's just something you're going to have to fiddle around with as well. That looks alright. Crappy camera move, but um, that's easily adjustable. So once we we'll zoom in, turn off the motion blur, once this completes, um, we want to just turn our shake off. So turn the shake off. And one more look. Alright. So that's uh, a large portion of the uh, tutorial completed, which is good. So we've got that covered. Um, the transforming logos, the dynamic shadows, all that good stuff. A couple of lights. Um, just check my list just to see what we're up to. Um, Alright, so there's not really that much more to cover, but what we will do now is add a vignette. So we'll just go new solid. This is optional. I always just call it vig. And uh, just double clip, uh, double clip, double click the uh, ellipse tool. Hit invert, F for feather, and go about 250. Actually, we'll go 350. Go about 40%, and probably just F4 and go overlay and just adds a little something to it alright it's looking alright alright got that covered and um... what else? Uh, we've got a lens flare in the original but before we do that I think, actually no, I'll do it now so we get a new um, adjustment layer actually we'll get a new solid just make it black and call it flare and we'll get the old stock standard lens flare set the uh, blending mode to screen and um, I mean I probably don't even have to do this you guys have probably done this eight million times but because I am trying to show how to create a template we'll do it so we'll start the uh, flare center over here and we'll just uh, dial up the brightness and uh, make it like 300 and then hit you on the keyboard come out I don't know do shift page down twice and then bring it over to the left of the screen over here if you can see that and then just uh, whoops I didn't key the, the flare brightness so key it at the start bring it out and go zero It was like seriously something really basic like that I did. But it wasn't that quick, so drag these out. And uh, maybe make it 250 at the start. It's a bit bright. And maybe bring it to the center of the screen. Something like that anyway. And then I think I did uh, tint. Whoops. Tint and um, curves or something on it. Oops. Pull up the green. Pull out the red. And some blue. And there's something very, very simple like that I did. Again, another optional thing, sort of real beginner stuff. But, you know, you can do it if you want. And then just grab these keys, Control C, Control V to paste, select them all, right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keys, and drag them out to the end here. And it just flares out like so. Alright, so that's
that's done. Alright. So, we've covered, uh, yeah, an awesome amount of stuff. So, now what, I'm, what I want to do is add the, the circle elements with some shape layers. I think this little touch really makes it look a bit more interesting. So, um, yeah, we'll do that next. Alright, so let's move on and create uh, the circle elements and um, some environment particles. So first up, just create a new comp and call it circle1. And just drag out a ellipse shape layer, like so. And uh, we don't need the fill. So uh, also go into the size and just set it the same in both X and Y and lock it. And um, in the uh, transform position, set that to 0 and 0. And stroke, I'll pump it up to about uh, 25, that'll do. And with the size, just bring it up to near to the edges. That'll be fine. And we're going to add a trim path modifier. Just crank the start percentage to about 5. I'll click the offset and type in time times 150. That'll give it animation throughout its life. Alright, so that's uh, that one done. Then we'll go out, duplicate that comp, and then we've got circle two, so just go in here and make we'll just make some basic mods, turn off the uh, trim paths, and we'll just change the stroke and bring down the size, and that's it. We're done, so what we need to do now is drag in the circle one and circle two just above our wall, and we'll do control shift C to precompose, and we'll call this comp circles and dive into there and what we'll do is make the opacity just randomly different something like that and we will just start to duplicate and change some sizes just sort of mix it up a bit get another circle one got a bit of variation something like that it can be whatever you want really doesn't matter and um, select all these and set a scale key here come out a bit set another one and set another lot here now on the first ones we're gonna make them all zero cut to the second lot and we'll just scale them up a bit and then select all these keys right click and go keyframe assistant easy ease gives us a bit of a bouncy animation. I can probably drag these ones in a bit. And that's done there. You can go in and um, you can add some layer styles if you want to. This is just another optional thing. Uh, what I do in a glow, blending mode, advanced blending, and fill opacity go about 20. And go down to the uh, inner glow and make it white and um, size just do I don't know whatever you want 15 15 will do copy that layer style and just paste it randomly on one of the other ones looks alright looks technical not really and um, there we go we've got something that looks pretty interesting scale this bad boy up and um, you can see now it animates on, settles down. We need to draw a mask around it so it doesn't uh, have a harsh edge where it meets the floor, but first we need to make it 3D. And we'll go back, scale it more, and draw a mask. And hit F for feather. Just drag the rightmost value so it looks like it's blending nicely. Yeah, it looks pretty good. and um, just uh, have a look at the blending modes, hit F4 add might be cool and then drop the opacity down looks ok, we can try overlay just a bit of trial error, we'll just leave it there for now 
and then we want to make uh, a shadow effect for this element as well so we'll control D and we'll enter and name it circle shadow hit R to rotate it go 90 in X and with the move tool bring it down just above the floor and turn its uh, blend mode to normal just see it pop where are we there alright and what we want to do is make it 100% opaque and just steal the effects off the trans the logo transformation 1 shadow and control V to paste them on there and we might need to knock it back down to 80 uh, hit escape to go to custom view 1 and we're going to need to do some masking so let's um, bring this out so we can take advantage of the current mask but we'll just modify its topmost point so hit M and just select the that one there shift select that one and nudge with the arrow key down and you'll fade that top edge off and um, escape to go back to the active camera view and it's looking good it's looking really good alright so we've got that taken care of now what we'll do is add some environment particles so we'll go new solid and if you're wondering where the other layers went I just obviously hid them didn't really need them uh, like the vignette and lens flare and stuff just give me a bit more screen real estate so let's add a CC particle world effect on here this is pretty simple stuff so I'll just breeze through this turn off all these gizmos they tend to get in the way and what we're going to do is go birth rate 0.8 longevity 3 producer we'll just stretch it out in the uh, X and Y so it covers the screen and uh, physics will leave on explosive velocity will go 0.2 gravity 0 um, what else what else particle we need uh, that's not it where is it? Mm. Here it is. We'll go shaded sphere. Their size 0 0.02. Their size 0 0.05. And uh, the color. We'll go white for birth. And just a blue tinge for death. And we'll add a glow. There's no point spending a lot of time on this because it is very, very basic. So, just sort of tweak these. I don't really want a lot of particles, just a few. Um, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Something more like that. I think that's probably perfect. I'll just check if we can see the motion. Wait while well, this uh, gives us a preview back. It shouldn't be moving too fast. Uh, it looks pretty hard to see, but I think it's alright. Yeah, that's fine. You might want to have less, but I'll leave it at that. So yeah, that's uh, the environment particles. Just call it E and V parts. It's good to name your layers, just keeps everything organized. Close that. Okay, so back to here. So we've got that. Um, another thing I did in the final, which uh, again it's optional, you may or may not like the look of it, I added a uh, grid effect to the wall and the floor. So we go to the wall and I just set it to normal mode and I change its size from to width and height sliders. I think I went 10 and 15 or something like that and border of 2 and uh, opacity went really low like 3 something like that you can add that in gives it a bit more of a techie look if that's what you're after but yeah just thought I'd, I'd mention that because it was in there turn that off okay and um, what else okay just want to uh, back step a little bit here. So if we go into the logo transformation, I just think this is important to cover uh, back in. So you've got all your sections here. Um, one thing that I did 
when I animated, well, it did the, it's the secondary animation on these sections. I just offset them slightly so you can do that. And it um, gives it a bit of a different look. You don't have to, and we didn't originally, but, you know, just looking back, I see that I've done that. And um, once you transform complete, you'll see some uh, semi-transparent lines where the masks have been drawn. And what you want to do is, when everything's transformed on, there'll be cracks. You turn off those layers, so just uh, trim them with, you know, alt-right bracket, and then bring in a copy of your content comp, which houses your logo, and it's fully opaque, and just make it start after that. That way you'll have a, a fully formed logo with no cracks. And also remember that in this comp um, is where you can put any logo and uh, the effects will update. So don't forget that. That's a cool feature. Um, so yeah, just dive back now. And it just reminds me too in the circles, let's offset them a bit too, give them a bit more character. Why not? It's easy to do. Looks good. Just like that. So yeah, we've got a bit of offset. So never hurts to have a bit of offset in your animation if you can facilitate it. So looks really good. All right. So that's rocking now. God, we're starting to get there. We're close. Um, and uh, another thing I did in the original, where uh, you can see the lens flare fades off and the logo is just there. I believe I went to transform one and just did a scale key from here to about 120 and then back down to 100 and right click easy ease and um, yeah very very simple and um, don't forget to when you uh, you go into your con uh, your transform say you, you want to go back and do the offset or you're at the start watching and you've watched this and you, you're gonna uh, create this offset don't forget once you've added this content comp switch the motion blur on because because uh, we've time reversed these layers uh, that's the part that's seen first and if you want to render it with motion blur and uh, you're not seeing it that's why because uh, if I switch this on now got some nice motion blur but um, if I uh, didn't have that switched on nothing the reason I say that is because I did that myself. I'm like, hmm, what's going on? There is no motion blur happening on my scale, but it was something as simple as that, so just remember that. Um, just checking the list here. Oh yeah, another handy tip might be um, w at the start when you create the transform effect, you cut up all your sections, you've got that effect completed, as in just the transform. Um, remember we've got two logos here so what I would do is just save off that file and just um, do another import of the actual full file and that way you've got your second logo done. You could and it's probably the most apparent way to do it would be just control D and duplicate all the comps and do alt drags and replace things and, and stuff like that but I think with this effect because the transform is probably the first thing you're going to do um, is just get that set up and then just re-import it and just rename some layers so uh, it's up to you but that's the way I sort of prefer to do it alright so um, we've got most stuff looking good here uh, one more thing I think that uh, we'll do is just do some basic color correction so um, let's create a new adjustment layer and we'll just add a curves Just do some really simple stuff here. Add some red and RGB, which are a simple S curve, like so. And uh, we can maybe add a tint. Sometimes you can add that before the uh, the curves. Just depends on what you what you want. Maybe go 20, so it's not so harsh. And then you could add that curves effect to. You know your logos if you want to stylize them a bit. Reset and um, bring that brightness down a bit. And Control C, Control V it on the A Tuts logo as well. So yeah, looks a bit nicer. So it's starting to come together. So you can do that, um, 
And yeah, I, I think uh, we've actually covered everything now, so that's really good. Alright, so thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of this. Uh, the reason I did it was just because I'd seen a couple of transform effects and projects around on the web, and um, I just I'd never really seen a tutorial explaining how to do it or one way to explain to do it. I mean, I'm sure there's there's plenty of ways, like there is with most things, to create this effect, but this is a way that I sort of come up with, and um, yeah, hopefully you'll learn something from it. And um, don't forget to check me out on Video Hive. My username's Ben and Aim. I've got a couple of projects on there at the minute. I'm going to build that up, but um, there's a 3D one and another, like I mentioned earlier, a logo reveal pack, um, which does include this actual transform effect. So before we go, let's have one more look at the final effect. Alright, thanks once again guys, have a great new year and uh, I'll see you around, cheers.